Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Friend, today we will discuss about the lung auscultation and we will also discuss what are the eight points for lung auscultation anterior to the chest and what are the six points on lung auscultation posterior to the chest. If you remember this point while lung auscultation, I am sure that you will never miss any of the lobe of the lungs during auscultation. Friend, we have made this video especially for medical students, interns and those who are doing nursing courses or nurse or those nurse who are working as community nurses. Before we proceed to our video, I would like to request you to kindly subscribe my channel and please press bell icon button. Now friend, this is the anterior side of the chest and here this is the clavicle where I have marked it. here this is the clavicle, right clavicle and left clavicle and the line which is running from the midpoint of the clavicle is called mid clavicular line. Here is the left mid clavicular line and you can appreciate some notch here that is upper border of the sternum between the clavicle. This is called suprasternal notch where you can palpate the trachea. And friend, above this clavicle, you will find some fossa or some shallow gutter. This is called supraclavicular fossa. And the imaginary line which is coming, which is going down towards the nipple, midway between the clavicle, is called mid clavicular line. Now you have to always begin your auscultation by placing the stethoscope over suprasternal notch to uh, listen the tracheal sound. You then move on to supraclavicular fossa where you can able to hear the sound coming from the apical portion of the lung and then move down towards the second intercostal space near the sternal border and then move down to third and fourth intercostal space along the mid clavicular line and once you reach the nipple, medial side of the nipple and lateral side of the nipple you have to auscultate and then go towards the axilla, the line that is mid axillary line, first you auscultate on armpit and then towards the 8th intercostal space. The same procedure you have to do on left side also. And remember one point, when you auscultate over here, simultaneously you have to auscultate on another point on the left side of the chest. Now come on to posterior aspect of the chest. Here we have six points over the posterior aspect of the lung chest where we have to auscultate. First, begin your auscultation over medial side of the scapula and always auscultate along the medial border of the scapula. You begin your auscultation on superior border of the scapula and go two finger down another point, again two finger down another. In this way, you have to on the sixth point where you will encounter the inferior angle of the scapula where your final last six point lies over here. So in this way you have to auscultate on posterior aspect of the chest. Now in case of female the breast, breast tissues lies over the chest. So in this case you have to do auscultation by directly pressing the breast uh, uh, stethoscope over the breast tissue or by lifting the breast and then you place the stethoscope. Now friend, uh, auscultation won't be completed until and unless you, if you won't uh, auscultate the apex feet and different components of the heart sound. For apex feet, you place your stethoscope just lateral to mid clavicular line at fifth on the intercostal space somewhere around the nipple and while auscultating the apex piece of the patient you just tell the patient to lean little bit forward and in this way you can auscultate the apex bit of the heart and then come medial to the mid clavicular line on left side where you can palpate the mitral area of the heart and then uh, move to uh, right side at fifth intercostal space near the sternal border where you can auscultate tricuspid area and then second intercostal space 
at left right side medial to uh, sternal border where you can aspirate in aortic area of the heart and then just opposite that means left side second intercostal space medial to sternal border or near to sternal border where you can aspirate in the pulmonary component of the heart sound when our aim is to uh, listen the normal heart sound and also to identify any abnormal, abnormal heart sound which you may hear during auscultation of the heart say for example cardiac murmur or valvular click what are the normal sound that you encounter during lung auscultation now first is a tracheal sound this sound is a high pitch and the duration of this sound is equal during inspiration and expiration and you can hear it by placing the stethoscope just over the suprasternal nose here this is a suprasternal nose and tell the patient to inhale deeply and exhale slowly so after the hearing this tracheal sound your next move is on second intercostal space near the sternal border so where you can hear the bronchial sound here and the same way you have to also auscult it on opposite side of the chest also that is if you auscult it right then simultaneously you have to auscult it on left side also so bronchial sound is the characteristics of bronchial sound is as identical to that of the tracheal sound and the third normal sound is called a vesicular sound which you can hear all over the chest moving downward and posterior see this is uh, this sound is uh, just like a uh, uh, rustle of the leaves and uh, this sound is uh, very soft and low pitch compared to tracheal and bronchial sound and uh, the duration of this uh, sound that is vesicular sound is little bit more during inspiration as compared to expiration so here are the three different types of normal sound which you can hear during lung auscultation and remember if you hear a bronchial sound or tracheal sound somewhere over lower part of the chest and posterior lower part of the chest then it is abnormal now let us uh, discuss about some abnormal sound which you encounter or hear during lung auscultation first is stridor stridor is usually a high pitch sound and it often you can hear during inspiration and sometime you can also hear or most of the time you can hear the stridor without placing the stethoscope also so it is usually caused by epiglottitis or inflamed epiglottis or foreign body in trachea or if there is some mass in glottic or supraglottic area we will also provide you some audio vision of this sound um, towards the end of the video another sound is called wheezing the wheezing sound is usually you can hear all over the chest and this is basically a continuous musical sound and you can hear it on both during inspiration and expiration and uh, in patient suffering from chronic obstructive pulmonary lung diseases now other sound is called ronchi ronchi also you can hear all over the area of the chest and this is usually a low pitch compared to wheezing and is uh, just sound like a snoring sound and it is uh, prominent during inspiration and it uh, clears with coughing most likely pathology in this case um, could be it can be a bronchitis or asthma now friend i have already told you before that while auscultation auscultating the lungs we have to always auscultate both side of the lungs that is right or left simultaneously because it will help you to compare the air entry on both side of the lung suppose imagine that if the air entry is diminished in right side of the lung compared to the left side of the lung the most likely cause here is either pleural effusion or partially 
obstruction of the airway such as bronchus. Now another is if there is a complete or absence of air entry over the lower side of the uh, chest, right side of the chest compared to left lower side of the chest. This uh, means that there is either segmental collapse of the lungs which we call atelectasis or there is a pneumothorax or maybe because of massive pleural effusion. That's why it's very important to compare the air entry both sides of the lung. Now friend, finally the crepitation. There are two types of crepitation. One is fine crepitation, other is coarse crepitation. Fine crepitation is a sound which is exactly identical to the sound which uh, you can hear during the sweeping of your palm over the hairs of your head. So this sound is uh, of low peak and the duration of this sound is more during inspiration as compared to expiration. Uh, the, you can appreciate this sound during auscultation in patients suffering from pneumonia or congestive heart failure or pulmonary edema or those patients uh, who have pulmonary fibrosis. And another is coarse crepitation. Coarse crepitation is usually high pitch compared to uh, fine crepitation and you appreciate this uh, sound like a bubbling sound or and it usually clears with coughing and this sound you can uh, appreciate in the patient with lung abscess or any cavity lesion. And friend, in order to demonstrate this sound that is coarse crepitations, you can you um, you just take a paper and just do like this. So this is a coarse crepitation. Sometimes the coarse crepitation is so prominent that you can also appreciate when when you place your palm over the chest like this and tell the patient to to do a inspiration deep inspiration and exhale slowly during this if there is a coarse crepitation you can feel some clicking um, sound over your palm so this is a coarse crepitation and friend lastly uh, on this topic uh, we will discuss about how to auscultate after doing endotracheal intubation Friend, whenever you put the endotracheal, endotracheal tube inside the trachea, you have to always begin your auscultation from left side of the chest in second intercostal space and third intercostal space and then move on to right side of the lung. The dictum or the uh, reason behind this is if there is an endobronchial intubation, the most common side of endobronchial intubation is the right side. That's why if there is an endobronchial intubation, then you won't find any air entry or less air entry on left side of the lung. And um, this is all about the lung auscultation. I hope that you, uh, you have understood everything, most of the thing um, about the lung auscultation and what is what are the normal sound and what are the abnormal sound you can hear during lung auscultation. And finally. How to hold stethoscope uh, during lung auscultation? So you have to always uh, hold your stethoscope in this way. That means this is the eye. Air piece should go like this, not like this, not inward, outward here. So you just hold like this. Now, friends, we'll provide you some videos about the normal and abnormal sounds which we have already already discussed in this video and friend uh, please kindly listen it carefully especially uh, its characteristics in relation to expiration or inspiration
so friend this is all about the lung auscultation it's very important to be familiar with these sounds because based on this sound you can get a clue of some pathology inside the lungs so thank you very much and have a good day